Hey, what's up everyone? DJ Sturf here. I made a strategy guide for Golden Freddy mode back in 2019, and that was okay. It can get you through the mode. This way is a whole lot more reliable, more replicable. So kudos to Random FNAF player, True Player, Ambience, uh, Toy Bonnie 360, Chesball 34, and Zombie Gabriel all had at least some level of involvement in putting together the pieces on top of what we already knew and yeah this is a whole lot better so anyway um i'll explain why it works how it works and let's go to the preset modes here and one thing you can use the arrow keys in the menu but the right and left will not change presets another funny thing about this menu well one there's no back button you have to hit f2 or actually play the knight to get out of this screen uh golden freddy mode let's say you change foxy to 19 or 18, <laughs> whatever. You see it grays out Golden Freddy as a preset, but if you reset it to 20, there's no check that actually makes it legit Golden Freddy mode again, so you gotta change the preset back and forth. I think it'd be tragic if someone were streaming or, or recording a video, and then they're like, oh, well, I accidentally clicked on BB and then reset him, but it didn't give you the Golden Freddy plush because it disabled the actual preset. So anyway, just some funny things about that menu, and anyway, we have a lot of animatronics here. Let me go through these animatronics one at a time, and I will be illustrating on top of this menu, so hopefully this will make some sense and be useful, okay? A lot of information, okay? Um, here. We have a bunch of animatronics here. Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie, Withered Chica, and Withered Foxy. Those are your Withered animatronics. You know, the term Withered was kind of a pet name that the community had for these dilapidated animatronics and we were thinking yeah these are the old animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's 1 well it was from a previous diner it was not from Five Nights at Freddy's 1 these are referred to internally as Old Freddy, Old Bonnie, Old Chica and Old Foxy which is why I put old here and it's interesting I don't know if Scott changed his mind about this not being a sequel and rather being a prequel. I don't know if that changed at some point. I'm pretty sure it had to have at some point, but uh, what a twist it was that we found out. Well, wait, the paycheck is less than it was in Five Nights at Freddy's 1? Yeah, it, <laughs> and it turns out it was a prequel. So anyway, uh, you, you have the toy animatronics as well in this one. You have Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Mangle. They're all in the same category. They're all referred to internally as New Freddy, New Bonnie, New Chica, and New Foxy. So. You have the old, you have the new, and then you have BB. <laughs> I guess BB is kind of in the in the same type of format as the toy animatronics, but uh, there was no old BB, so there was no comparison there. And also we have Golden Freddy, internally Yellow Bear, YB, ya boy Yellow Bear. That's the internal name for Five Nights at Freddy's 1, and it's the same thing in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. You know in the Night 6 phone call as well, the yellow suit or whatnot, yeah, that's referring to Golden Freddy, AKA Yellow Bear. So just an interesting factoid there. The community liked Golden Freddy so much that Scott put that as the official name and that carried forward. Same thing here, the withered animatronics, you can see in Five Nights at Freddy's world that they're all the withered animatronics. So yeah, Scott incorporated those as well. Kind of the head canon names of the community, I suppose. All right, funny thing is, this is not really, 1020 mode is kind of a misnomer in some ways because even if you set all 10 of these to 20, which that's correct, you set all of them to 20, so that's the, the purpose of 1020, calling it 1020 mode. But you have some issues here. Withered Freddy is actually capped to 15. Same with Withered Bonnie. Same with Withered Chica. Same with Toy Freddy. You see a pattern here. Well, yeah. Uh, they're not all 20. Actually, none of these are. Mangle is also capped to 15. You know, Golden Freddy is actually capped to 10. <laughs> Interesting, huh? BB is... Oh, whoops. <laughs> I wish I could do that sometimes. Uh, 15. <laughs> Just cross out BB. Um, some of the Five Nights at Freddy's World... Uh, runs where I didn't want the fan. I just deleted an arbitrary character, but I would often delete either, you know one of the BB variations just for just for grins. But anyway, <laughs> Toy Bonnie is capped to 15, but there is a contingency with Toy Bonnie. There used to be one with Toy Chica, almost certain, uh, and we'll get to that. Uh, Withered Foxy is capped at 17, but there's a contingency with Withered Foxy. 
He operates a little bit differently from the other animatronics. So let's talk about some of these similarities between characters. Um, and I'm, I'm not putting in the extra ones that I'll put in later. So it's not just these 10 animat animatronics that have AI values, okay? So starting with Withered Freddy. Withered Freddy, Withered Bonnie, Withered Chica, and Toy Freddy are all desk animatronics. And I don't know why it was split like this necessarily, but it was. So all of these animatronics will attack you at your desk. I kind of wonder if the initial design was for all of them to show up at your desk, but then Scott got bored with that and decided to throw the other two Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica over to the vents. I don't know. But, um, and maybe they needed some company, so Mangle and BB were added to the vents. Who knows? But anyway, the desk animatronics, they're basically interchangeable. There is a little bit of a pecking order or priorities between which one will show up if two are in your office. But uh, you won't get a double attack from a desk animatronic. They will show up one at a time. But they do something interesting that I didn't know before and all that, but your defense, uh, I'll cover that in a second, your defense is to put on the Freddy mask on night seven within three quarters of a second. On uh, night seven, that's just how it is. It gets harder and harder based on the night value, so it's reaction time based mask plop on. All right, then when you have that blackout phase when everything goes crazy with the lighting and you have the animatronic that you're kind of staring at through the mask, yeah, that lasts 300 frames, so you have five seconds of that. And what we have here, they do something else. So as I mentioned in the 2019 strategy guide, there are five second movement cycles basically, and there are 84 possible cycles in the night. First one doesn't really matter too much. The second one starts to be a little more of a threat because you might see Foxy, but um, here, especially this point right here, every 10 seconds, if you are winding the music box and one of the desk animatronics are essentially in the office at your desk, they'll pull down the monitor and you'll have to respond by putting on your mask within three quarters of a second. And sometimes if you're winding the music box just minding your own business and you're not expecting a pull down, yeah, it might take you by surprise and you might miss the mask button. Or maybe you have the habit of trying to put down the monitors first and you're uh, mousing over the right side and not the left and you might miss the mask button altogether. So there's a lot that can go wrong when they do this, but if you're planning for this, kind of like the strategy I'm about to talk about, and I've already shouted out everyone, so... So basically you have minor and major cycles, or a sub-cycle and a super-cycle. You can still have movement by the animatronics here at the five-second junctures, but at every 10-second and 10-second multiple juncture, yeah, you can have your monitor pull down by a desk animatronic if you're winding the music box if they're in the office if they're not then they won't so you got to pay attention to that but for the most part in golden freddy mode you'll almost always have one as a threat they'll stack up as well so if they're all in the office then you just have one waiting for the other because there is a priority with all these animatronics they won't disappear like more than one at a time but then you have Withered Foxy also with a check at every 10 second multiple. I found this really interesting as well. It's not actually on the five seconds that Foxy is checked, Withered Foxy here. Um, Withered Foxy is checked at every 10 second multiple and there is a meter for Withered Foxy. And I guess I should categorize Withered Foxy as well, but I treat this as kind of like a thermometer. So I'll get to that in a second. But so Withered Foxy is a hallway animatronic. He goes between cam eight, which is parts and service and your hallway. And what you have to do with Withered Foxy is not put on your mask. That will more likely get you a jump scare than not. And actually if there are no threats and you have your mask on and Withered Foxy's in the hallway, Withered Foxy gets more and more angry and is more likely to attack. But you have to flash the flashlight on Withered Foxy. And what you have here is there's kind of a light warm-up meter, which we'll treat it like a thermometer, but whenever Withered Foxy shows up in the hallway, the meter starts at zero, all right? Every frame that you have the flashlight on, it adds up light exposure, and if you hit 100 times the night number frames, then Withered Foxy will retreat to parts and service for a time between 500 and 999 frames. So what we're talking about here, if we have night seven, 
So if we have x equals 7, basically, uh, or n equals 7, you have 700 frames, which is equal to seven, 700 frames of flashlight, which equals 11 and 2 thirds seconds. So you have to shine the flashlight on Withered Foxy for 11, .2, 11, 11 and 2 thirds seconds, 11.6 repeating seconds, in order to send Withered Foxy back to parts and service. That's a lot of time. You don't have to do it all at once, but the charge stores up. The other thing is, if you don't flash regularly, and specifically before one of these 10 second junctures, and you've got to, like if you flash right before this mark, that's very helpful. But you want to try to flash just a little bit whenever you can. But I would say hold down the flashlight in Golden Freddy mode because about half the time you're going to be attacked by animatronics. And whenever I hold down my flashlight, it gives more frames of light exposure. So whenever Withered Foxy sees like a, a tiny bit of light or whatever and it's near that 10, 10 second juncture, you're probably going to be okay. But Withered Foxy is likely to stay there in the hallway for a more prolonged period of time. You don't wear down your batteries as much. And if you're running out of battery on Golden Freddy mode, then yeah, you might want to uh, just flash barely sometimes. But anyway, we'll go over the right vent camp strategy and a variation that I have on it as well. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of that in a little bit as well. But anyway, if you hold down the flashlight, the light does add up. But whenever a check is done and yeah you have 700 plus frames of light exposure then withered foxy will retreat to parts and service and what is this so that's uh eight and one third seconds to just under <laughs> so we we got to do uh what e exclusive right 16 and two thirds seconds just under um that's how long withered foxy will return to parts and service but then Withered Fox will return to the hallway, and you got to do that all over again. So you don't want to spam 11 and 2 thirds seconds worth of flashlight, if at all possible. However, I guess if you're sitting in your office toward the end, and you just want to get rid of Withered Foxy, and are just chilling and hoping the marionette doesn't attack, maybe you could just scare Withered Foxy back to parts and service that way, and that would actually be a viable strategy. But you got to make sure you have enough battery for that. That does wear out the flashlight battery pretty quickly if you just hold it on for a really, really, really long time. So anyway, um, yeah. So these are in frames, basically. There are 60 frames per second that process through in Click Team, and that's how you have it. And Withered Foxy can be annoying, especially if you are flashing one cycle and not the other, or if you are plopping off your mask, so you're a little out of phase, too far forward in the phase, and you basically pull off your mask and there are 16 frames out of 60 where you can't actually flash uh, that was you know early on or version 1.0 you could actually have your flashlight on and your mask as well but that was changed so whenever you have the mask on it's yeah lights off for for the flashlight uh, so I mean that that was put in there I'm sure to avoid the flashlight spam to get the best of all worlds by having the mask and the flashlight on I I don't know, I mean, you would think that someone with a job like that, maybe the Freddy head is too big or something, or too heavy or something, but, I mean, you can pull the mask off. I, I don't know, you need a lighter, like a, <laughs> like a carbon fiber <laughs> Freddy mask so it's lightweight or something. I don't even know. Make it out of paper mache. And <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, yeah, hallway animatronic here, Withered Foxy. I think that's just about it, but every 10 seconds there's a check. There's actually a like recency meter for the flash, and it's not very generous. So that's why I'm saying you, you should flash at least some point close to this 10 second check just to be safe. But anyway, well, yeah, if you're flashing regularly and uh, with, with one of these two variations, uh, you should have more successes than failures. So that's one thing you probably don't have to think about, but that's what's kind of going on there. Uh, yeah, so, all right, that's Withered Foxy and the contingency there. Wither Foxy has a 17 AI, but yeah, there is uh, this this whole light exposure dynamic here that adds to it. All right, what about BB? BB <laughs> steals batteries, so he's not battery boy, but he's balloon boy. You don't want him to steal your batteries. That would be pretty tragic, because then Withered Foxy can get very mad, and you can get jump scared very easily. All right, so with BB, BB is a left vent animatronic. 
you will hear four audio cues from his start of approach to him being at the event opening. Then the last one that's that you're going to hear when BB is at the vent opening, and thanks True Player for this extra tip here. It will always be hi, but you can also hear that same sound effect, that same high sound effect, as a random whenever BB is either approaching or going away from the office. All right, so you're not guaranteed to hear hi only when. BB is at the vent opening, but whenever BB is at the vent opening, you will always hear hi. All right, that's just the way it is. So it's either hi, hello, a laugh, or a metal clanking noise for the four random noises when BB moves. But the last one when BB is at the vent opening will always be hi. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful. And what else? What else? Uh, BB, the defense is a little bit different. BB will not move away from your office at the five second interval necessarily. If you put on your mask, a little bit different rules for the vent animatronics, and, and specifically three of them, but um, five consecutive seconds with the mask on, the numbers will count up, one, two, three, four, five, every second that you have the mask on, then BB will guaranteed leave. But yeah, there's also, as you're wearing the mask, every second there's a one in 10 chance so we'll just say a 10% chance of BB leaving on those randoms as well. So there's basically a roll of a 10-sided die, and if it's a 1, then yeah, BB is going away. And you'll hear some movement, and you might, you might hear one of BB's noises, and you're like, wait, that's not what I was expecting. Like, I didn't have my mask on for 5 seconds. But another thing to note is if you take the mask off, like mask on, mask off, like future, um, it resets the counter to 0. So you got to have it on for five consecutive seconds. And that is true for three of these animatronics. So you can figure out which ones. And one of them didn't actually used to be like that. And you also have the 10% rule for Mangle and Toy Chica. But they operate that way now. Toy Chica used to have a little bit different dynamics. I'm, I'm like 99% sure on this, okay? So I guess don't completely quote me on this, but like 99% quote me on it. I think Chica had a two and three chance of actually leaving at some point. And maybe that was due to a panning animation that wasn't used in the final final game. And with Chica's panning animation, you just had Chica without a, a beak and it was kind of a diagonal, like upright type motion instead of like a right to left, like Toy Bonnie. But that was scrapped. And you can actually, you can actually see the animation. Maybe I'll just play a clip here. Okay, cool. I think I might have played a clip there. Um, <laughs> so Toy Chica had a little bit of a contingency, where every second there was a check, and there was a two and three chance of Toy Chica actually moving. Now that two thirds is actually just completely gone altogether. But I'm quite sure that was there at some point. We'll get to Toy Bonnie here in a second, but. Toy Bonnie has some dynamics that are kind of like that as well. And Toy Bonnie has a lower priority of attacking than Toy Chica. So, yeah, when Toy Chica was going to pan, like, diagonally upright, Toy Bonnie had a check to see, oh, is Toy Chica attacking or, and all that. So if, if so, then you weren't going to see Toy Bonnie. But Toy, Toy Chica could just go. And that was really about it. And uh, two and three chance. But now it's just this. So ignore all that. Now it is just put on your mask for five consecutive seconds, or every second that you have the mask on, there's a 10% chance of movement. But it's a much more reliable bet to have your mask on for five seconds. Remember that the blackout phase, whenever one of the desk animatronics lasts exactly 300 frames, and that's five seconds in Click Team. So having that attack phase should give you enough time with the mask on that you should be able to thwart any attack from the vent animatronics. And you do get a little bit of a benefit there from leaving the mask on a tiny bit longer. But anyway, that's, yeah, you might hear the sound effect a little bit delayed because all the audio doesn't doesn't pop up on the first millisecond of the audio file. So I'm not sure you can't just go at that point. But anyway, a little safer to wait a little bit, kind of space it out. And uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. What about uh, Mangle? Mangle, and I guess, yeah, let's let's mention Chica as well as a left vent animatronic, okay? So I think we've covered Toy Chica pretty well on that. Uh, again, could be a little stubborn with the movement toward the office, but if you have your mask on for five consecutive seconds, yeah, that gets rid of Toy Chica now. So that's really it. And then, yeah, 10% chance every second of uh, an early exit. 
All right. Not talking about an NCAA tournament, though. All right. So, right vent animatronic mangle. You have an audio cue with mangle. Very, very helpful. You know exactly when mangle leaves. You don't want to check the monitors while mangle is still there. Uh, yeah. You, you just you don't want to have mangle in your office. Otherwise, anytime you want your music box, you have a chance of mangle popping down and you know, chomping down. Yeah, that, that's that's no fun. So anyway, uh, Mangle is very useful with the sound cue though, and you can tell when Mangle's gone, and that yeah, either marks five seconds or less, because you have that 10% chance every second of Mangle making an early exit. And I think that's it for Mangle, really. Whenever Mangle attacks, maybe we get into strategy too early here, but I, I, I try to wind eight. It's just kind of like, if I hear Mangle at the start of me winding the music box or anything like that, so I'm like right at the edge of the cycles. Yeah, so the movement to the office, you then hear Mangle, and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to wind eight. And I'll pop the monitor down. So I spend about four times winding, uh, four seconds winding the music box in that case for eight winds, and then, yeah, that's, that's eight. Also, Toy Bonnie is an eight in my mind. Whenever I see a Toy Bonnie attack, I try to wind eight, but that can be thwarted if Toy Bonnie is super stubborn. Toy Bonnie is the final vent animatronic here, right vent animatronic, and usually the run killer, very stubborn. The defense against Toy Bonnie is the same kind of idea, but there's no guarantee that Toy Bonnie will ever leave if you put the mask on. Every half a second, if there is no threat in the office, there's a check, and there's a 50% chance of Toy Bonnie panning across. That pan across takes five seconds. So that takes up a lot of time on the music box. Or if there there is a threat, so there's another animatronic looming here, every one second there's a check and there is a 33.3 .3 repeating percent chance of one in three of Toy Bonnie starting the pan across. So basically if there are other animatronics ready to go, ready to attack, just like in Golden Freddy mode almost the whole time, you have a one in three shot of having Toy Bonnie start the five second pan across attack. With the other animatronics, you just hold the mask on for five seconds and they're gonna be gone. Or you have an early exit or whatever, 10% chance every second. But um, yeah, so Toy Bonnie, the expected time is probably gonna be about three seconds for Toy Bonnie on average to go across on Golden Freddy mode. Not always, but sometimes also with randoms, like pretend a one in three, uh, one in three chance would be having a six-sided die, and if you get a one or a two, you have a one, you have a one in three there. All right, so two out of six is the same as one in three. And if you roll, uh, if you roll the die, and you get a four, you get a four, you get a five, you get a four, you get a three, you get a four. You notice that it's not a one or a two, so you haven't had a <laughs> a scenario in which Toy Bonnie would move. In that case, you can have Toy Bonnie stall out the entire music box. It's a low, low, low chance, but you got to remember as well, the music box runs down completely from full in 16 and 2 thirds seconds on night 7. And here, since Golden Freddy is a custom night and night 7, yeah, uh, you only have to have 11 seconds of Toy Bonnie stall before you have barely anything left. And chances are you probably didn't have a full music box uh, just, by, just by odds at any given point on the night. So... Yeah, it's, it gets crazy with Toy Bonnie. Toy Bonnie can also throw off the whole five second schedule because let's say Toy Bonnie waits three seconds and then you're waiting for the attack and now you're all out of phase. You gotta get back to where you wanna be. It, it, it gets a little hectic. So Toy Bonnie is the... Uh, <laughs> Toy, Toy Bonnie has a different type of, uh, type of attack pattern altogether. Very unique. So. Anyway, but very frustrating at times, and the pan across takes an extra five seconds. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> Toy Bonnie. Uh, oh, man. Uh, any, okay, so that's uh, usually after a Toy Bonnie attack, I try to wind to eight. But the thing is, as well, if you're running up against these 10-second checks, and there is uh, one of the desk animatronics ready to go, you can have Wither Chica pull down the monitor in an instant. And then it's like, well, you have another attack from an animatronic, so you got to wait another five seconds for that to end. Uh, I guess I should put here as well, just for the information, 0.75 seconds on night seven for the reaction time for these animatronics, and I think it's a less than. I don't. I think it's an exclusive, so um, I'll, I'll not put that there. It's it's either <laughs> 0.75 or just less than 0.75. So I guess that would be what 0.733333 um, if it's one frame less out of 60. Anyway, okay, so. 
Yes, that is what we are dealing with here. Toy Bonnie is annoying compared to the other ones, and also capped at 15, but there's a contingency there that you have that random roll, all right? And I'm quite sure that Chica had a 2 and 3 chance there. It might have been related to the pan animation or whatever, but all right, that's about it for the vent animatronics. Golden Freddy basically just don't shine a flashlight on the hallway head and just put your mask on if Golden Freddy is sitting there in the office on the left side. That's really about it. Golden Freddy's pretty simple. Also not too reactionary. He's capped at 10 for the AI. <laughs> it's funny though, I mean, everyone calls it 10, 20 mode and there's more, there, there are more than 10 animatronics and none of them are actually on 20. Talk about some of the animatronics that are unfortunately not on this menu, but I think probably should be, <laughs> but do have a bearing on gameplay, all right? And this one especially, the important one you have Marionette! Sad yet happy. Mar! AI is capped to 15 on night 7. And then you have Music Box Charge at AI 15. Gives you 16 and 2 thirds seconds of charge from full to empty. So if you do absolutely nothing, you'll have 16 and 2 thirds seconds before your Music Box runs out completely. But there's also, every second after you're out of charge, basically, there's a check, and since it's AI-15, there's a 15 out of 20 chance of Marionette advancing to the next phase out of the present. So basically, Marionette can be inside the present at stage zero, then stage one, barely out of the present, then two, way out of the present, and then three, I'm coming to get you. So that's what you have with Marionette. You don't want to have Marionette run, if at all possible. One other thing you can do is if you hold down the flashlight, while you have no charge on your music box, Marionette will not have that check done on that one second interval, and then you can wind the music box a little bit more. So, for example, if Toy Bonnie takes forever or runs your music box out, then you go to your monitors and you're on cam 11, you hold down the flashlight, that will stall Marionette, and Marionette will not advance, and then you can wind the music box a little bit. But <laughs> Marionette has to be in stage zero, one, or two. Marionette can't already be running. Plus, you can't just tap the flashlight because if you tap the flashlight, the check will still be done. So you have to have the flashlight on at those one second checks. Otherwise, Marionette has a chance of advancing and it's a 75% chance in this case since it's a 15 out of 20, okay? Uh, on night seven. Uh, different nights have different values for Marionette. I wish you could customize Marionette. That would be kind of cool, but just like all the others, I mean, there's a 15 AI cap. It was, you know, the exception, <laughs> there are several exceptions there, but uh, Withered Foxy, Golden Freddy, and another one that's kind of surprising as well. We'll get to that. That that one's a kind of a silly one, but I'll cover that. Uh, but anyway, you have Marionette, a key player here, and you just want to keep the music box wound. You After you first start the night, the first click that you do, hold your mouse button down the rest of the time because you don't have to click on the wind up music box button every time. It just checks, is your mouse button down? So is your left mouse button down? And are you hovering over this box, this region of the screen? So that graphic basically, or that, that box. Yeah, you just hover your mouse over that while your mouse button is down and you should be good. So you don't have to spend energy clicking or whatever. You just hold it down and while you're over that, you just get to the right location. That'll give you a few extra frames of, of charge on your music box. All right. Another interesting thing is if you have no charge in your music box or under two and a half seconds remaining on your charge or a charge value of 300, then if you click on that once, or I should say have your mouse button down while over that region, it will set it to two and a half seconds of charge, all right? So basically that's that's this whole stop gap. It's very nice. It gives you a little bit extra time, but you can test that out yourself. Let your music box go down all the way, then just you know click or whatever. Or if you're holding down your mouse button, just hover over and all that. But if you're testing it, yeah, you can click and I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, it is click team, right? You are allowed to click. But anyway, with the main Golden Freddy strategy, for sure, hold your mouse button down after that first click and then you should be good, okay? Um, and I don't know. You could you could click before the night starts too. Like you could just hold your mouse button down. I think that that would be fine too. Like that, yeah, that would still fulfill all the criteria. <laughs> so you don't even have to click the first time. You could just hold it down from the yeah from the ready button. <laughs> you just click the ready button and hold your mouse button down. That that would be fine as well in this case. Anyway, okay. So with Marionette here, is there anything else? Uh, <laughs> the music box charge is very odd. On night seven, it drains. 
20 times a second at six value each time. So it decreases, so it, it, the max value is 2000 on the music box, but you can discharge the music box on night seven, 120 per second. So that's how you get 16 and two thirds seconds. Uh, and then of course you have the extra two phases of safety from the puppet and uh, yeah, then you have the third where the puppet will actually run. All right. Oh man, and there's a there's a complicated set of room movements for the marionette, and yeah, it's it's crazy. So, oh, all right, that's that gets to the heart of things with the marionette. You just want to keep the music box wound. All right, what else? All right, this next one's going to seem a little silly, but there is an AI attached, and you can probably guess who it is. Well, specifically Paper Buddy, but Paper Pals. You can play as Paper Pals in Five Nights at Freddy's World, so another game where you have these obscure Easter egg characters that can you can actually play as. Kind of neat. But Paper Buddy can move to your office on night seven only with AI zero or one, and there is a one percent chance of you getting AI one, which gives you a five percent chance any time of kind of an open opportunity. I think if you're not threatened. You have a 5% chance any any rotation into the office of getting Paper Buddy. So 1% times a lot less because <laughs> you have a 5% chance at AI1 of any movement to the office. And you have to have like the right opportunity of clarity and all that to have that happen. So it's a very, very remote chance of getting Paper Pals moving and Paper Buddy in your office on just the right side, kind of just pinned up there and... It's interesting because when you're attacked by any animatronic, Paper Buddy will disappear until the uh, the attack is done. So if you're staring at that part of the screen, you just see yeah, Paper Buddy disappear. And then at the end of the attack, you'll see Paper Buddy again. So um, once in the office, Paper Buddy will stay there. And that's really it. I think there's just a blip of static. I think that's the only thing that's really changed with Paper Pals. I don't know if that had any sort of uh, purpose before, but... Anyway, that's that's one random Easter egg. I take that as an Easter egg. It's kind of like JJ underneath your desk, and uh, yeah, it's it, that's more of a, a random occurrence, you know. And another example of a random occurrence here. Uh, where should I draw? Okay, here. Uh, we'll, we'll put it. We'll put it here. How about that? You can guess who it is already, huh? Yeah. Let's see if I can draw the face decently here. teeth and then happy teeth <laughs> that's that's okay that looks more like withered bonnie than rwq fs fas xc but i'm trying to do rwq fs fas xc so this is just a random occurrence it's one in one million one in one million that anytime you drop your monitor, you have a one in a million chance of getting RWQ appearing. RWQ can crash your game after four seconds, all right? You get a flash within that time frame, or really, you have to have RWQ there. If you flip again, then RWQ won't show up, and it'll still end up with a crash game after four seconds. So you have four seconds to respond without flipping again and all that. And I've seen some videos of people putting on the mask, and then RWQ fades away. I had success with the flashlight, both naturally and in debug, so I mean that's that's I think how to do it for sure. But maybe there was a flash on those videos when the the mask was placed down or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, you want to flash RWQ with a flashlight and just you know one one quick tap and all that, and then that will that will prevent a crash from happening. Um, let me know about the mask. Like if you had success with the mask and all that. So maybe there is some mask functionality that, that I don't know about. And maybe that was it. But I don't know. I'm, I'm quite sure on the flashlight though. And I know that when I encountered RWQ in game that I just I flashed. And then it was like, oh, bye. And that was it. And we, we were free. So, all right. That was that was about it on RWQ FS FAS XC, a.k.a. Shadow Bonnie. Is there anything else there? Not really. <laughs> you have JJ. So you have the the under the table hiding there as a as an Easter egg, and then you also have uh, Shadow Freddy. Uh, yeah, Shadow Freddy on Cam Eight. 
I think that just relies on certain animatronics being there and then a random number being drawn. So that's that's a rare occurrence as well. I'm pretty sure Shadow Freddy does not crash your game. I'm not 100% sure on that though, but anyway, worth worth checking out for sure. Uh, was there anything on Yellow Bear, Golden Freddy that I haven't mentioned? I didn't mention anything about Golden Freddy really outside of put the mask on quickly, don't flash Golden Freddy. Hallway or office animatronic. How do I draw office here? Skyscrapers, yes. Cool. <laughs> So Golden Freddy can either be in the hallway as a head or as a full suit in uh, on the left side of the hallway, basically, in the office. And that's really it. Uh, maybe one other factoid about BB. BB will laugh every two seconds if BB is in the office taunting you for stealing your batteries. Yep, that's not a fun experience. <laughs> one of the funny things is on that three-win video run that I had of, of 10, 20, three wins or whatever, uh, yeah, BB stole the batteries at 5 a.m., like, during some 5 a.m. or whatever. And, like, I was expecting Foxy to jump, for sure, but I got through that, and that was kind of miraculous. So don't expect that to happen on the regular, but that's the first time I've got through with BB stealing the batteries and laughing at me every two seconds. But uh, that's that's really about it for these animatronics. Uh, I guess another Easter egg, you have the endoskeleton. What, like, with the the ears like this or whatever, endo. Um, you can have endoskeleton appear if the marionette is gone from the music box attack, about to attack or whatever. So that's, that's a random as well. And also can be an event as well. So you have a chance of that. It's just kind of an Easter egg. You also have the rare screens. So you have Withered Foxy, Withered Freddy and Toy Bonnie, I think, are the three. I think those are the rare screens. And then you have the mini games as well as Easter eggs. So you have a pretty rich game with the Easter eggs and all that. But those are just some cool things that Scott put in and all that. So I don't think it has much of a bearing on <laughs> the actual gameplay at all. I'm quite sure. But all right. So those are the dynamics. I've talked a little bit about the specific cycles of the game and all that. But uh, let me clear this off and get a blank screen. And I will go over the right vent camp strategy and why it works and maybe go through a quick scenario. All right, so everything's cleared off, we're good to go. Your timer for the night is seven minutes. Every hour is 70 seconds. That gives you 420 seconds for the entire night. You have the game running in five second cycles. Every five seconds there is a possible movement by each one of the animatronics unless they're in the office then there are different rules for each one of course and there's a major check here every 10 seconds all right so let's let's do minor major minor major and when I say this as well there can be movement every one of these minor cycles by any one of the animatronics approaching or going away from the office but every 10 seconds if one of the desk animatronics or Foxy, basically. We'll just put Hallway on that case. And not, not Golden Freddy, but just refer to that as Foxy. One of the desk animatronics, if you're winding the music box, can pull down the monitors at that, at that juncture right here. Or Foxy, if Foxy's mad and Foxy's in the hallway and all that, you haven't flashed recently and there's not enough charge to throw him back to... Uh, cam 8 and you haven't gotten rid of him by this point then yeah foxy can jump scare you okay and it's going to be at every 10 second juncture so there's like a minor major minor major everything's in cycles there are 84 cycles per night all right should be good to go the first one doesn't really matter too much because i mean you can get jump scared by golden freddy if you forget to put the mask on but no one's going to be a real threat. No one's in the office. Uh, I guess you could get RWQ as well. Like, you could have your game crash right away or something if you have really bad luck on that. Or, I guess, really good luck on that. But depending on whether you want RWQ, FS, FAS, XC to be there and potentially crash your game. But, uh, yeah. What I usually do... And, uh, actually, let's not talk about that yet. I'll talk about my variant after this, okay? So, the game dynamics here... 
you have the desk animatronics who can pull down your monitor, but if they're ready to attack in the office and you go back to the office, then you'll have to plop down your mask. It's kind of whether you want them to pull it down or you want to pull it down yourself. Also, they will not pull down the monitor if none of them are in the office ready to attack, but they will kind of stack up. And after a while, you're basically almost always going to have an animatronic there of the desk variety after a certain point. Not all the time 100% because there are instances of you not having any, any animatronics there, possibly, or just Foxy, or maybe one of the vents and none of the other desk animatronics, but that's just the randomness of it all. So at the AIs being capped at 15 for those animatronics, there's a 75% chance of movement on each five second cycle if they're not already in the office. But that also means that some are gonna move, some aren't, and it's just, yeah, the more roles you have, the more differences you're gonna have, and yeah, they'll be in different spots, okay? Also different, different paths to the office as well play into that. So, all right, uh, what else, what else? Uh, so with the right vent camp strategy, all right? So the office layout here, you have a left vent, you have the hallway, and you have the right vent. What I used to do, and what I had in the old strategy guide, it will work, but it's a lot more random. It, I don't know, maybe an expected wind time on average would be several hours. And I went back and won in between three and four. Uh, when I went back, I think it was, I think it was, yeah, same time around that in 2019 before I made that strategy guide. Uh, so I would, when coming out of a music box, uh, I would plop down the mask, all right, and then if I were being attacked and all that, I would pull the mask back off, and then I would flash the hallway, all right. Almost always flash, that's a, a good thing to do. And then I would go, I would basically start from the left side and then check the left, check, uh, then flash the, <laughs> flash the middle again and then go to the right, all right? And then I'd probably flash right before going back and then, you know, plopping down the monitors and then mousing over that wine music box area of, the, oh, whoops, <laughs> area of the screen there. So um, actually I do need to do that pretty soon here. Um, so that was the old way, I call that the T path because you're, you're kind of going in a T or whatever. And just probably don't do that at all anymore, okay? So this is a much better route, and I'll explain why that works as well. So if you're being attacked by a desk animatronic, all right? So every 10 seconds, you're going to have your monitor pulled down. Then you're going to have five seconds where they're going to attack, all right? And you've had the mask on for five seconds. You just leave it on a tiny bit longer just to give it a little bit of latency. And then everyone, except for Toy Bonnie, will be gone if they were there before. Then you have the possibility of having Toy Bonnie still there. So you're gonna check the right vent. I really I really flash first. I mean, that's, that's probably a good idea anyway, but flash first and then check the right vent for Toy Bonnie, all right? So if you see Toy Bonnie, you're going to put the mask on again, or don't, <laughs> don't, don't go to the monitor, just put the mask on, all right? And then, you're gonna wait for Toy Bonnie, and then Toy Bonnie will pan across eventually. The annoying part is though, if Toy Bonnie takes, let's say, you know, 10 seconds, <laughs> you might wanna pop off that mask and then flash again. Like, oh man, so there's a chance of Toy Bonnie being a real pain, but you're gonna plop on the mask and hopefully Toy Bonnie will go across. There's a one in three chance if there are other threats. Every second of Toy Bonnie starting the attack and then that lasts for five seconds, all right? And then after that, you're going to, if Toy Bonnie is gone there, you've had the mask on for five seconds, so you're you're getting rid of all the other animatronics by doing that on in the vents, okay? Then you're just gonna go back to the monitor and you know, you're gonna wind the music box, okay? So that's about it for that part of the strategy. So let's let's simplify that just a little bit more. What you would do, you would let the desk animatronic pull down the monitor and then you're being attacked here, okay? Then you're gonna leave the mask on a tiny bit longer just to kind of span that gap. Hopefully there's movement and you've had the mask on for five seconds or more. That's a terrible mask. <laughs> Let's not have that one. Um, but yeah, you, you have the mask on for five consecutive seconds and all of the other three will, will leave. But then you will get out of the mask, you'll flash, and then you'll check the right vent. If Toy Bonnie's there, you put on the mask. If not, then just 
I mean, flash again, why not? And then I would hold down the flash just a little bit more than just like a, a quick tap or whatever because you're charging up the light exposure for Withered Foxy and then there's a greater chance of sending Foxy back to parts and service for a little bit. All right, sending Withered Foxy back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's the basic normal part of the strategy. However, if there are no animatronics and you have, like, if, if none of the desk animatronics are actually attacking, you don't want to wind your music box longer than, let's say, eight ticks, and I'm talking about the winding music box noises. Every half second, you'll have one of those noises, and uh, basically here, if, if, you, uh, if you go back and wind the music box to about here, and uh, yeah, there, there's no one pulling down the monitor and all that. Then you have to you have to worry about Foxy flashing and all that. So you don't want to wind more than about eight ticks or whatever. Uh, you can be greedy and maybe get away with nine because that's four and a half seconds out of those five. But that's that's really pushing it. But um, but basically, you want to wind your music box and have an animatronic either pull down this monitor or uh, or I don't know. So yeah, you, you you get a flash in here. Hopefully that'll appease Foxy until the next possible attack or whatever, because there's probably going to be someone uh, endangering everything, like a vent animatronic or one of the desk animatronics. But uh, if there are none, then you've already, you flashed here, all right? And uh, you're winding and you go beyond this point, you're like, well, that's that's eight ticks now. So you're going to, you're going to pull down the monitor, pop down the mask in case Golden Freddy's there or another animatronic or whatever. And then you're going to check Oh, you're going to hold flash. Yeah, for sure flash. All right. And then you're going to check the right vent for Toy Bonnie. Then you're going to go across, and you're going to check the left vent for either BB or Toy Chica. Note also, if you hear high, there's a chance of BB being in that vent opening. If not, then, yeah, BB is not in the vent opening. It's just the most recent sound effect has to have been high for that, that to be a chance, all right? Otherwise, yeah, BB is not going to be in that vent opening. But Toy Chica is silent. Uh, Toy Chica doesn't have the pan animation anymore or like the, the diagonal up or whatever animation, but yeah, that's just something to to deal with when you get there. Hold on the mask for five consecutive seconds if you see one of the animatronics there. So, uh, so you have the mask for five seconds. Or if there's no one, you can go and wind the music box again. And then hopefully at some point, again, you're going to be brought back in phase with this strategy. So when I talk about in phase, uh, in phase would mean that one of the desk animatronics pulls down the monitor for you. So that's every 10 seconds there. And that's nice as well because you know that Foxy check every 10 seconds? Yeah, if you're threatened or whatever, Foxy's not going to jump in those cases. So you diminish your risk from being attacked by Withered Foxy by a lot. And it makes me think as well that if a desk animatronic were always there, there's maybe a chance that you don't even need to flash like <laughs> it's just uh, it's, it's weird to think about but that might actually be a thing but the odds are that there's going to be a point in, in the night at some point in which none of the desk animatronics are going to be there and likely up, up front at the start you know at the start you're probably not going to have a desk animatronic waiting to go so you do need to flash for sure if foxy is there in the hallway there is still a chance for that to happen so um if foxy's not in parts and service so in phase would mean a desk animatronic brings it down and you have basically at the end of the blackout phase when you're getting, actually, let's do this. Let's, let's get back in phase here. All right. So uh, pull uh, one of the animatronics here, the desk animatronics pulls down the monitor. All right. So another five, another five, and then you're attacked for the next five seconds. All right. You hold down, you hold on to your mask for just a little bit longer, just in case. You hear the sound effects, you have peace of mind, you get out there and you go get them and uh, then you are in phase, all right? Because, yeah, you hear, you're, you're going to hear the clanking movements or whatever from the minor phase at the end when you still have your mask on right after the blackout phase. And, you know, thinking about it as well, I'm not sure how long you necessarily need to hold on the mask. Ambience has it as 0.75 seconds. Um, uh, and you, you can check out Ambience's strategy guide. I've, I've given a shout out to those who, who have been involved, but Ambience put together a pretty good guide on 
the uh, the delayed mask strategy. I have a slight variation that I like to use, but that's just more of my preference because I'm a little more jumpy on how I go about things. But you're going to have a little bit of a delay between you hearing the sound effect and the movement actually having occurred because the sound doesn't necessarily start on the first millisecond of the audio file. So this may actually be a little bit longer than you need, but this can put you at the right point in the cycle where you're not winding the music box so long that the animatronics are getting annoyed and all that, but you're getting you're going to be in phase with another desk animatronic pulling down uh, your mask or pull, pulling down your monitor, not your mask, and then you get to plop your mask on. Okay, but um, anyway, that's that's something to, to test out for sure. But uh, that that's a it's a good idea to keep in rhythm. So uh, that's that's fully legit. I mean, you, you can totally do that and keep in rhythm, keep in the same spot every time wind the music box and then you're expecting at some point here yep someone's probably going to pull it down otherwise you kind of get a good time idea of how long to wind and yeah whether it's seven ticks or eight ticks or whatever it just depends on how fast you are getting to that music box winding button and sometimes you can also like be a little careless with your mouse and then you you kind of get off of that region on the screen so then you lose a little bit of efficiency there too you got to have your skills up to beat this mode for sure but uh, yeah, that's that's one critical thing too. Just get used to how you should play and then hopefully that will carry you a lot of the way, okay? All right, so let's go through a scenario and I'm just gonna come up with this on the fly. So hopefully this will make some sense. Impromptu, five second chunks here. All right, so you have a minor check and a major check and a minor check and a major check. Basically to start out the night with this strategy, I'm just going to periodically wind the music box, especially up front. I'm just going to charge up the music box fully. And you might hear some metallic clanking noises at that five second mark. You want to pay attention to those noises because that's a regular movement cycle. So you want to keep in touch with what's happening there. Uh, and then, you know, you go to the monitor and then you flash just, just in case, you know, it, it's just alternating through these parts right here, going back to the monitors, cam 11, basically cam 11 simulator <laughs> it's unfortunate you can't see a lot of the scenery past a certain point but anyway if foxy is in the hallway and all that i mean you still you still want to flash on on these little uh these opportunities here right uh you get some charge in on foxy and basically if you get a little bit of light in and all that you'll you'll stun foxy for a little bit but it'll only stun him for so long and you want to eventually increase the exposure of light so that Foxy will go back to parts and service. But to maintain, you can just tap the flashlight from time to time, but try to get as close to this as possible right here. Like before, actually, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. This is the safest right here. You just, you get a little bit of a flash in here. But anyway, if you want to mix it up and not have Withered Foxy as a threat the whole night, yeah, you can hold down the flashlight a little longer. And since you're attacked so much on Golden Freddy mode, you're probably fine with that, and you're you're likely not to run out of battery unless you're really, really holding it down. Especially if you're holding it down while you're on cam 11, that's going to waste a lot of unnecessary battery unless you're trying to save a uh, an empty music box. All right. So uh, let's say we flashed, and then we go back, wind the music box, all that, and uh, eventually we have some movement. Some animatronics are showing up in the office, and let's say 20 seconds in, we have the first attack by a desk animatronic. So here, you have a check. Fox is gonna check, am I mad or not? <laughs> it doesn't matter in this case because Toy Freddy, so T Fred, pulled down the monitors for you. So you being in the music box winding and all that, at this point right here, you know, in between flashing the hallway and all that, um, yeah, Toy Freddy pulls down the monitor or any desk animatronic and then you have 0.75 seconds to plop on that mask. <laughs> that's, that's a funny looking Freddy mask. Um, <laughs> closer to a Bonnie mask, I guess, in this case. Um, so anyway, yeah, 0.75 seconds to put on the mask. And if you get there, then, yep, you're going to wait for the attack. If you don't have your mask on by 0.75 seconds in to the attack, then after that five second attack, you're gonna get jump scared, so it's just a matter of time. But if you did get the mask on in time, you have five seconds of blackout phase. 
So 300 frames of that where you can't pull off your mask. And then there is another phase after that that you're going to hold the mask on for a, a little bit extra. Just so you have, you have a little bit... Man, these mask drawings get worse and worse every time I do them. Uh, you're going to have 0.75 seconds where you keep the mask on. So you, you, you wait 0.75 seconds. Then you take the mask off. All right. The, now the actions start to pile up on what you have to do. You take the mask off. Then you're going to flash the hallway. All right. Then you're going to check the right vent for Toy Bonnie. Since you had the mask on for five, really 5.5, 5.75 seconds consecutively, you should have the left vent animatronics all gone as well as Mangle. But Mangle, you can hear. Mangle is pretty easy to tell when when Mangle's gone. All right. Uh, but you're going to flash the hallway to appease Foxy, maybe hold it down a little bit, get some charge up on Foxy. So he'll get charged up with light and be like, Arr, matey, I'll go back to parts and service. Aye. Uh, and then you check the right vent for Toy Bonnie. But in this case, okay, there's no Toy Bonnie. All right, so no Toy Bonnie. All right, that's fine. Then you're going to you know, maybe flash again just to get a little, little more charge up. And while you're doing that, you're going to... Pull up your monitors, wind the music box, and hopefully you're going to have the same thing happen again. So basically what you have here is you have five seconds where you have been attacked by a desk animatronic. Then you're holding the mask on just for a little bit, so you are covering this minor check right here for possible movement. And then you have a little bit of time to do all your checks and all that, and you're going to spend this rest of the time winding your music box and the cameras then hopefully here you have another major check and another animatronic pulls your monitor down okay so that's where we're at so let's say another animatronic pulls down the monitor so this time it's wither chica all right pulls down your monitor so you have 0.75 seconds on night seven to put on your mask a lot of repetitive actions here but you put on the mask you wait five seconds for the blackout phase to end and the attack to end, basically. And uh, you'll see everything kind of brighten up slowly again, and that's that's your cue to know, okay, I can actually pull off my mask again, because you can't during that attack. But anyway, uh, so we're going to wait another 0.75 seconds after the attack. So we're going to wait 0.75 seconds. And then... Same thing again, and this time we're going to have a little bit of, of difference in what we do. Okay, so I'm going to take off the mask, flash the hallway, then check the right vent for Toy Bonnie. Uh-oh. Toy Bonnie is there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So what I'll probably do is I'll just do a quick flash again. Just why not? <laughs> Basically default, just hit control. And uh, all right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the mask. All right. And I'm going to... Wait until Toy Bonnie pans across right to left. All right, so this is the Toy Bonnie attack. And let's say I waited, I waited three seconds in this case. Okay, um, what I'm going to want to do is get out of the mask immediately after that, and then I'm going to well, I'm, I'm going to flash. I'm going to flash because I don't want Foxy to jump scare. Regardless, I want to charge up the light on Fo on Withered Foxy so that Foxy ends up not being in the hallway the whole night. And then I'm going to go to the monitors, wind the music box, and I'm actually going to wind 8, but I'm expecting to wind 8 or something like that. But then we'll see on the next phase. So this is going to look like this. Uh, here we had another animatronic pull down. So Withered Chica pulls down the monitor on this major cycle. And then we see Toy Bonnie after a little little wait period here, and we're like here now. We're like here with Toy Bonnie, and then Toy Bonnie attacks for five seconds. So we're already here, man. And that's that's rough too because then if I go back to wind up the music box, right? I only have a little bit of time before one of these other animatronics pulls down the monitor again and, and gets you back in phase. So. Um, I guess there would be another, I mean, you, you could you could wait, but then make sure you're flashing for sure, because you have Foxy as a threat, especially if no other animatronics 
are looming and all that. But uh, yeah, that's that's just something you either you either have to wait and then start winding over here and then. But that that throws you way out of out of cycle. I mean, you want to be attacked at about this point. So it's just unfortunate if. Uh, Toy Bonnie goes across and all that, but you're going to wind the music box as much as you can, and uh, and that's it. So let's say that there's no desk animatronic next time, all right? So let's say, all right, we're, we're going to go over to another five-second block, all right? All right, say this is, let's pretend this is a minor check and this is a major check. So you're winding the music box, and you've already gotten some charge up on Foxy and all that. That's cool and all, but yeah, you're winding the music box and you go beyond where you would expect, like let's say it's eight ticks or something like that. All right. And this was the juncture here where one of the desk animatronics would have pulled your mask down if it was gonna happen. Well, in this case, maybe there are no animatronics. Maybe there are no animatronics in the office. So you, you, you're going to pull down your monitor you're going to put your mask on just in case Golden Freddy's there or another animatronic is there anyway. This wouldn't make the most sense in this case because you would probably have... And this is mostly for Golden Freddy in this case because otherwise you'd have at this main juncture here, this main check, major check. Yeah, you have, you're going to have one of the desk animatronics pull it down or not, okay? So, um, so mask on, mask off, and then... Uh, you get a future music video, <laughs> and then you, you get a flash the hallway. You're going to check the right vent for Toy Bonnie. Let's say there's no Toy Bonnie, all right? Nope, there's no Toy Bonnie. Then I'm going to flash as I go across to the left. So I'm going to pan right to left, and then I'm going to check the left vent. And then let's say there's, uh, there's Toy Chica, all right? Oh, Toy Chica is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the mask for five consecutive seconds, or I guess, I mean that's that's the safest bet. If you hear movement, you have you have a 10% chance every second of having Toy Chica leave. But uh, just hold on for five consecutive seconds if at all possible, because that guarantees that uh, anyone in the vents will leave. So uh, so or 10% per second. There's a chance, but. If you have the mask on for five consecutive seconds, you should hear movement at that point, and then you know you are good to go. But if you pull off that mask too soon, if you're counting and you're you're starting and saying one, two, three, four, five, you notice I counted a little bit faster than one second intervals, and I started with one. All right, so if I started at point zero, so origins are zero zero, and you start with one and you count to five, like if something happens, like one, two. Three, all that, like you're counting from one to five, which is four seconds. So you want to say something like go one, two, three, four, five, or however you want to count and all that. But yeah, uh, you got to start with zero or go or some zero point and know that you don't start at a zero point with one because you could be counting four seconds or you could be counting fast. And as a result, yeah, you can get you can get a very stubborn toy chica, but it's really because you're not counting with proper seconds or whatever. So thinking about toy chica, toy chica is a little unique in that she is much more silent than BB and Mangle for sure. Mangle, you have audio cues the entire time, and you know exactly when Mangle is gone from the right vent. BB, you'll hear either metallic clanking or three vocal cues. You have a 75% chance of getting either hello, hi, or a laugh. So that's a lot more helpful in determining is someone gone from that left vent or not. Because Toy Chica, you just have to be sure that you have that mask on for five consecutive seconds, or if you hear that movement or whatever, you gotta make sure it's not the main movement cycle and Toy Chica's still there. Uh, you, you're, just, you're gonna have to check the light again on the left side. You're gonna check the left vent and uh, and make sure that Toy Chica's gone. Uh, then after all this, you, yeah, just five consecutive seconds is the safest bet. Then after that, uh, again, I'm going to flash the hallway because I like to flash the hallway. So I don't like Foxy jump scares or Wither Foxy jump scares either. <laughs> so um, anyway, they're interchangeable in this game. I'm just trying to be specific on this. So anyway, uh, and then I'm going to go back to my monitors. And then I'm going to wind the music box and hopefully uh, let's say seven to eight and then hopefully another 
desk animatronic will pull the monitor down. So that's kind of a scenario mode for everything that happens on the main schedule here. So the only time that you'll check the left vent is when there are no desk animatronics attacking and you don't have the mask on as a result for five, five consecutive seconds or more. But um, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's what to do. And only if you see Toy Chica or BB in the left vent will you have to put your mask on. If you don't have anyone, let's say it's empty, all right? So there's, uh, let's have another scenario and it's just completely empty, all right? So uh, you, you, you don't have anyone. So you actually, you pull down the monitor yourself. You're winding the music box. And you're like, all right, well, um, yeah, I'm gonna pull down, <laughs> pull down the music, pull, pull down your monitor, <laughs> and then you're gonna you're gonna put on the mask just in case Golden Freddy's there or a desk animatronic if you don't know if you're in phase or not, all that. And then you're going to take off the mask. So here I was supposed to do that. Mask on, mask off. Just really quick, and then you're gonna check. You're, you're gonna flash. <laughs> This part's getting a little disorganized here. Uh, you're going to check your right vent. There's no Toy Bonnie, no Mangle, no anything. Then you're going to flash as you go across. Then you're going to go to your left your left vent, and then you're going to check, and there's there's no one. All right. I'm just going to, I'm going to flash, and I'm going to get some uh, charges in on the music box, all right? Let's say I, I go eight on that one. I'm like, hey, free charges on the music box in this case. That's pretty good. And note also that anytime you're winding the music box, each tick represents half a second. So if you're taking one and a half seconds to check the right vent, then you have time for basically seven music box winding noises before you're gonna have the desk animatronic either pull down the monitor or not. And uh, yeah, but you're gonna wanna try to keep it consistent on where you are in the phase. Uh, my, my variation on it is a little bit different and I'll, I'll cover that here. But uh, basically, for the most part, you're going to flash the hallway and check the right vent for Toy Bonnie after a desk animatronic attack. And that's gonna cover about, let's say 90% of what you encounter past like the fourth cycle. So yeah, that's, that's really helpful. And why it works is the attack lasts five seconds and holding that mask on for five consecutive seconds will get rid of three of the four vent animatronics if they're there. So that's about it. All right, let me go over my variation and I'll clear this off again. So hopefully that was helpful and hopefully that makes sense for the scenarios, all right? I'll, I'll put one of the completions. I'll put the gamma adjusted completion at the end of all of this and you'll have an example and you can go to for, uh, for everything that I did through that. But that covers my variation of it. All right, so there's one variation that I like to use and I'll cover that here. So I'm gonna start the night, five seconds, five seconds. So you have a minor possible movement cycle and then a major possible pull down cycle. But the first several, you're not gonna have a pull down because they're not gonna, the desk animatronics aren't gonna reach your office by that point. They just, they have to go too far basically, too many room changes and each one's one step toward your office basically. So, I'm going to start the night. I'm going to go to Cam 11. I'm just going to stay on Cam 11 because this is basically Cam 11 simulator. And then I'm going to wind the music box nine ticks. So that's going to put me just past this minor check. And this one allows me to have more control over how much I'm winding the music box as opposed to having the animatronics actually pull down. So <clears throat> I don't love that, but I, I call this out of phase, all right? So out of phase, and I wanna be slightly out of phase in this case. I don't wanna be far out of phase, otherwise you risk a foxy jump scare, a withered foxy jump scare to be specific. Uh, out of phase, the desk animatronics pulling your monitor down does not happen on the regular. If it does occur, you just have to go back to the in-phase strategy and then get out of phase a little bit again. I'll explain that here. So I actually wind the music box nine times in this case, and then I'm a little bit past this movement phase. So I'm going to hear, <laughs> it's a terrible ear, good grief. Yeah, that's not a very good ear either. But anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna hear movement at this point or some kind of like 
warning noise for the vents or whatever. And then I'm going to pull down my monitor. I'm going to put on my mask. Pretty standard procedure here. And uh, some mask on, mask off. Just in case Golden Freddy's there. Uh, I'm going to flash the hallway. You don't want to flash first because if, if you flash first, you can run into trouble. That can be a jump scare too. All right, and then, yeah, yeah. So you flash the hallway, why not? <laughs> Eventually Foxy will be there. And Foxy could be here at some point here fairly soon. Basically what I've seen, and I need to double check this at all, but if you just, if you flash every five second chunk or whatever, you should be good, I think. Especially if it's late in the phase and then it's near where the major is Foxy mad or is a desk animatronic gonna pull down your monitor that type of check okay but um, yeah you just you just want to and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold down the flashlight in this case just to charge it up if Foxy's actually in the hallway um, so that's the first thing okay so one two three flash and then I'm just I'm just gonna just 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 by habit check the right vent then I'm going to go back to the monitor I'm gonna widen seven that's gonna put me actually in this case, like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wind seven, and that will hopefully, at this point, put me about the same spot. You notice that here, I'm going to hear more movement at this point. That's supposed to be an ear. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, my goodness. I need to look at more ear pictures, I guess. Or maybe not. Uh, nah, I don't think I do. But <laughs> So that's going to put me about the same spot winding the music box. And it's going to put me a little bit out of phase, but whenever I am in the office and all that, I'm going to flash, just get some light shining. Here, I'm going to going to check here, flash. Uh, so this is just the light or whatever. And it's basically the same type of movement on most of these throughout the whole phase system here. So you pop down your monitor, you get out of the monitors, you put the mask on, mask off, flash the hallway, Right, and maybe maybe you'll throw in a throw in a flash here as well. You know why not? As you're going to the monitor, you go back to the monitor, wind seven until you actually have an animatronic attacking. And so whether you pull down the monitor yourself and then you have an animatronic attack. So here, let's say I pull down the monitor from here, right? Let's say I pull down the monitor and there is an animatronic attacking. It's a desk animatronic. It's Toy Freddy. All right. So T Fred, the desk animatronic is there, but does not pull down your monitor. You pulled it down and there was an attacker there. So it registers as you being good to go as long as you get that on within 0.75 seconds, your reaction time. And at that point, if I'm hearing at the end of this five second attack right here, so I, I pulled the monitor down here, right? And then I have, I have an attack by Toy Freddy so T Fred attacks here. Then I have an attack that lasts past this check right here. So technically, Foxy is not going to be mad and jump at this point because I'm out of phase, and I can pull down the monitor whenever I want. Any any five second phase or whatever, um, I'm going to wind the music box past this iteration, and there's going to be a check here. I'm going to hear movement again, most likely, and then. Yeah, then I'm going to pull the monitor down again, and there's going to be another major check. Most likely, there's going to be another desk animatronic here, either pulling the monitor, well, not, 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 not pulling the monitor, but just attacking. And since I've already wound here, the attack is going to last through this major check. So, I mean, each time, of course, you're going to flash the hallway during this phase, during this phase and all that, so you're going to keep Foxy somewhat happy, but you're putting, you're putting the phase out of reach of Foxy jumping at you. And so that's why I kind of like this out of phase. You can you can pop out of your mask instantly in this case, and you should be pretty well set for Foxy. Usually, I think of the threat being Foxy in the case of pulling your mask off, and yeah, in in the case of you being in phase, it shouldn't be because you're gonna flash and you have all the time in the world to to flash against Foxy. But the problem is with this, you can get later and later on in the cycle. So let's say let's say. Uh, Let's say I wind, I wind eight, all right? Let's say uh, Mangle 
is there or something like that, and uh, and I hold I hold the mask on for five seconds, then here I go for five more seconds. The five seconds ends at this point right here. I'm probably going to hear movement, and then uh, let's say I wind eight. So I'm actually going to put myself a little more out of phase. So I'm advancing in the phase. Well, why is that a problem? Because here's here's a check. All right. The time here is more like, let's say there's three seconds, all right? So three seconds, and then you have a major check, and you can you can have uh, Foxy, yeah, a Foxy check is done right here. So you have Foxy, and then you have a potential, if you're in the cameras, which you're not. Uh, so you don't actually have a, a desk animatronic possibility of pulling your mask down. But uh, in this case, let's say then I, I wind another eight. Like I just, I'm feeling greedy. Uh, there's a minor check here, and I, I go eight, or let's say nine. Let's I go nine. Oh man, so I have like one and a half seconds now of time between the next, like me pulling off the math, or me getting out of the, uh, <laughs> me getting out of the music box winding, and there being a potential hallway check for Foxy. And you get further and further out of phase. Let's say the next one, I go another nine, and. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I end up going absolutely cray cray and I'm winding the music box and all of a sudden I have like half a second or less to flash to keep Foxy happy. Well, you're probably going to get a Foxy jump scare, all right? Because you only have this amount of time and you're, you're going to put your mask on and off and by that point, you're not going to have time to flash Foxy. So you don't want to be so far ahead and like right behind one of these major checks that you're going to get a jump scare by Foxy. That's what you're trying to avoid. So I like to be a little bit out of phase so that I'm in control of when I pull down the monitor. And if I'm hearing movement too far into me winding the music box, then I know, well, maybe I need to wind it six times. All right. So six will bring you back in the cycle just a little bit. You just want to be ahead of that. Uh, you want to be ahead of that movement so that no one's pulling your monitor down. Oh, well, Toy Bonnie can ruin it though. So that's the thing. You can go back to, like, you don't have to use this in particular at all. You can go with in phase. I think that's a very solid strategy. But then Toy Bonnie throws it into a tizzy whenever Toy Bonnie shows up and, you know, he just stays there for, you know, six seconds. And it's like, well, what do you do then? Then you're out of phase. You gotta, you, you either have to get back in phase quickly or. Um, you have to go with like this out of phase strategy, but in this case like you can be pulled back in phase by Toy Bonnie So let's say Toy Bonnie has an attack Toy Bonnie uh, Pans right to left it takes five more seconds and then you're eventually back in phase because oh man Well Toy Bonnie ruined your your rhythm Toy Bonnie breaks your the rhythm of players so much in this game and that makes the mode really predictable so i would say you have to know how to play both in phase and out of phase and the thing to avoid is you, you can't get too far ahead in the phase that you don't have any time to flash foxy all right because you, you got a flash uh and if you hold down that flashlight if at all possible in golden freddy mode get as much light charge up on foxy as you possibly can so that you are avoiding uh i mean you're, you're potentially sending foxy back to parts and service but hopefully yeah, it's it's enough to suffice any sort of check that Foxy has for light and all that. Okay, uh, so anyway, you go back in phase uh, and uh, let's see, Withered Bonnie pulls it down or whatever. Then what I would do to go back out of phase, if at all possible, if you don't have Toy Bonnie, all right, I want to get back out of phase a little bit. Well, instead of winding seven, which usually puts me about the same spot in the cycle, I'm going to wind eight. I'm, I'm going to wind 8, and I'll probably wind 8 again. Like, I don't even care. I'm going to wind 8 again the next time. And the exception is, well, if you have Toy Bonnie, that's the exception. All right, because Toy Bonnie can throw you back in rhythm or out of rhythm or in phase or out of phase. And, yeah, you're hoping for Toy Bonnie to attack right away. If that happens, that's probably for the better. But even then, that can throw you off. If you're... <laughs> yeah, it, it can throw you... Yeah. Any attack by Toy Bonnie can throw you off. That's basically what I'm saying here. So in phase for sure, use that strategy. Uh, if you want to hold on that mask for an extra 0.75 seconds, so you're going to wait 0.75 seconds extra after the attack basically finishes, you can actually pop off the mask. But I like out of phase because uh, 
control. You have control over at least till Toy Bonnie when you're pulling that monitor down and you have the same motion, all right? So it's it's a it's kind of a flowy motion that I'm used to. <laughs> flowy, flowy. Um, <laughs> it's a flowy motion. But um, yeah, I, I, it's kind of like one of these or whatever when you're when you're using the mouse. And uh, yeah, that's that's just what I'm used to, I guess. But uh, it's nice because you have control of that. You have a flowy motion that you can keep on and you can pull off the mask right away. So, yep. Pull off mask right away. And that really should come before the flowy motion. But anyway, this goes here. That's about it. So anyway, Toy Bonnie can throw you back in phase if you're out of phase. And if you're in phase, Toy Bonnie can throw you back out of phase. You just don't want to be so far past the phase <laughs> that you don't have time to flash fox and then you're jump scared, all right? So anyway, uh, what a complicated game. <laughs> there are extra contingencies as well. There's some funny things as well. Um, some of the priorities on the desk animatronics you won't have all attacking at the same time, of course. So there are priorities there. It's kind of a pecking order there. But also you have some instances, if there are no threats in the office and you have the mask on, Foxy gets more mad. So Withered Foxy charges up the anger, basically. And then uh, also if Withered Freddy is way, way far back, there's a chance of a very quick movement to the next camera. So there are some things going on. Some animatronics take priority over others on certain cameras, uh, on certain nights. Uh, it's just, yeah, I mean, do you get certain Easter eggs or not? How is that going to affect anything, really? It's more just Easter eggs than anything else in those cases. But anyway, so, yeah, a lot of stuff. It's a, it's a complicated game, even though, I, I mean, a, a lot of people would, would contend this could have been a Flash game. And I think they're probably right on this. But at the same time, there are a lot of interactions that were thoughtfully done. Maybe some things I would still balance. And it doesn't really matter now with this strategy. I think it's easy enough. But um, with the, the mask, you pull it off. And then you have 16 frames where you can't actually flash the flashlight. So you don't have your mask on. But you can't actually flash the flashlight. So 16 frames out of 60. So... Um, yeah, it's it's not too cool. But anyway, uh, and then Toy Bonnie, the one and three. I wish that Toy Bonnie had a cap. I had, a, had a cap on how long the delay could last, you know? Because there's a chance that you keep rolling two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, or whatever. Toy Bonnie can be uh, stalling out forever. So anyway, kind of crazy. I guess one funny thing is with Toy Bonnie, if you want to charge up some flashlight, maybe another strategy that I've been toying around with is... <laughs> this is probably not a great idea, okay? <laughs> but um, you just put the put the mask on and off and on and off and on and off. <laughs> and like in between each one, you just, you just tap the flashlight, tap the flashlight, tap the flashlight. So you're just getting flashlight on Toy Foxy, and hopefully you're you're at some point hitting that one second check. There's a chance that you just miss it every time though with the check, and it, it's just never done, and Toy Bonnie never moves because of that. So, actually, that's probably not a great idea, but just with these, think about some strategies you can build on, or if there's something to improve this with, and that's kind of the that's the spirit of improving strategy and building a better machine and just seeing what can be done you know let's make this as replicable as possible and so everyone that i mentioned up front as well had a part in putting together little pieces and you know they were huge monumental additions to this that this used to be i would say the most luck based mode out of all the bunch i would say 50 20 mode is the most skill requiring and there's a huge ramp that you have to get to to get up to the skill to beat 50 20 mode but after that I, I was getting wins consistently every, let's say, 20-25 uh, minute block at about the time of that charity stream. Uh, and I would say, give me 45 minutes and I could probably get a win. Like, I would expect I would have at least one win. Unless I were just, like, completely exhausted and just weren't focusing or something like that. So there was a lot more focus required and a lot more training required for 50-20 mode for a success. But 
1020 mode didn't have a whole lot of dynamics that you had to do in terms of the movements and all that, but you had to get really lucky with Toy Bonnie, especially with the, the T pattern or the left, middle, right, uh, like the Oh Look It's FNAF, the, the old style of, of checks and all that. But I mean, yeah, it's this is, this is such an improvement. And it's because you have the mask on for five consecutive seconds. That gets rid of the left vent. And I don't know which version that kicked in because I'm pretty sure that at some point Chica had a two and three chance of actually leaving or not at any cer any certain check as opposed to a hey you're gone uh and i don't know whether that was with the pan animation or not i just have to go back through the the versions of the game and, and figure that out but anyway it's it's interesting how the game has progressed how things are balanced uh, how these animatronics all interact and work and yeah i guess maybe another piece of important information if another animatronic is attacking uh Withered Foxy is not going to jump scare you in the middle of one of those attacks. But after the attack, you're fair game. And that's where the 16 frames come in here. So it's just like, you have 16 frames, you, you can't actually flash. And if BB shows up and steals your batteries, even worse. You can't use your flashlight at all. But anyway, so, um, <laughs> so anyway, just reviewing very quickly here. As I don't have much space on the screen, uh, at least... Okay, I, I got space down here if I need it, but... Alright, so here, you have the left vent, you have the hallway, and you have the right vent. So what you're going to do on a normal occasion is flash after an animatronic attack. Then you're going to check the right vent for Toy Bonnie. If Toy Bonnie is not there, then you just go back and you wind the music box. Or, if no desk animatronic pulls down the monitor automatically with the in phase, or if there are no animatronics there at all attacking, then you're going to uh, mask on, mask off, of course, and then flash. Then you're going to check the right vent, and then you're going to go across and then check the left vent and check if you have either BB or Toy Chica. All right. So if no Toy Bonnie, no Toy Chica, no BB or anything like that, then you go wind the music box. But if you have either Toy Chica or BB here, then you're going to put on the mask for five consecutive seconds, or I guess until you hear a movement, but it's more consistent depending on where you are in these phases and all that, whether you're in phase or out of phase or whatever, five seconds consistently with the mask on will do the trick, and then you should hear a movement back to whatever camera they are going to go back to, okay? And if you pull off the mask before that five seconds, uh, are you know, all, all those five seconds are added up, then, yeah, you you have a, a timer that starts over, so that's that's no good. That's no good! So anyway, that's the right vent camp strategy. So instead of going left, middle, right, or middle, left, and then middle, right, or whatever, and then middle, <laughs> like flash as much as you can, charge up that light. Yeah, uh, this is much better. So anyway, that's that's the point of strategies. And I hope this video had some good examples. I'm going to put the Gamma adjusted Five Nights at Freddy's 2 win after this and hopefully that will be a good example of that plus you can really see the hallway on some of the old videos YouTube compressed it and it really just it's yeah you, you can't see like anything in the hallway especially not Foxy and that 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 bugs me so I, I did that gamut adjust one just so you could really see so anyway that's about it thanks for watching everyone this is the 2021 addendum to the strategy and it discusses the in phase and out of phase strategies and I still like the out of phase as much as possible, but that just, it puts me at what I was used to, I guess. But anyway, all right, so that's about it. If you like the animatronics pulling your mask down, you want to go in phase for sure. And then you can see the earlier part of the video. Or if you like to have the control and be able to pull off your mask right away and have some flowy motion, yes, that's, uh, that's for out of phase. But again, Toy Bonnie can flip you between the two very quickly and kind of ruin the rhythm. So... All right. <laughs> and a lot of this is just rhythm, you know. Oh, man. All right. Peace. God bless. Have a great day. And enjoy this gamut adjusted clip of a 1020 win from those three runs. All right. Cool. Peace.
Yep. Cool. Yeah! All right, three runs under an hour. That's pretty good. <laughs> and that's gamut adjusted, so hopefully that's cool to see.